Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today is going to be all about mining and things we can get done, and also finishing up our house. Anyways, guys, I hope you're ready. So when we left off, there was a few things here um, that definitely needed uh, fixing and continuing, and that is getting our house up to par. Now, I'm still debating on whether or not I want this to be a one-story or two-story, and I'm thinking it would probably look good as a two-story, but... I think I want to continue. I want I want the work to happen underground because um, it's it's a little bit easier to conceal things underground. So we want to have an upstairs where our main utility is. Like like I said, having like a refined storage system set up right here and where we can access it through this main area, and then have a stairwell that goes down. That's my idea for this area, and it's you know it's it's kind of a big project for uh, just getting started, right? Uh, as like your first project, just building a house on your first day. But believe me, it's well worth it and the payoff is worth it. Um, so what I have here is some frame blocks. I did say I was gonna show you guys how to spruce this up. It is very plain right now. So let's go ahead and create some framed blocks. Now these are really easy to make, they're just sticks. So I have tons of wood here. Let's go ahead and make some more. So yeah, it's, it's as simple as literally just building blocks out of uh, sticks. And I love block craftery for this reason. Um, and I'm also going to grab some of the, uh, the actual stone that we were building everything with. And what I want to do is I want to place them like this. Right? And then place this right on the front. Front side. And you get the same sort of matching pattern that's here. And that allows us to put some windows in. So if we take some of this, we can make some glass panes, which are perfect. There we go. And if we want to, we can even chisel the glass panes um, and we can make them look however we want. Um, and I'm thinking about going with a, uh, not a Japanese style, but maybe, I don't know, there's the bubble. I don't, I just don't want the regular, uh, t the kind. I, I kind of, this is borderless. There should be, these are framed, uh, screen, gray bordered, light, hmm, streaks. This one doesn't really have a border on the streaks. The bubble one I really like though. So I'm probably gonna go with the bubble right now. Of course we can always chisel this however we want. And there we go, look at that. The bubble doesn't actually have, it, it is a connected texture. So um, I definitely recommend going this route for that. Um, now I was thinking about also incorporating some kind of frame design here. There's gonna be a door, a single door here. I don't know if Malice Doors is in here. Doesn't look like it. Cause when we search door, uh, we don't have that many options. Oh, there, Mr. Crayfish's furniture mod might have some uh, interesting doors that we might get into later on. But that is another reason to sort of think about building a house. Um, because you do have a furniture mod in here that is very extensive. So getting started with that furniture mod might actually be a good idea. There we go. And yeah, why, why have a furniture mod in here if you're not going to have a, a functional house, right? So I figure that's a, that's a good idea. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these put in and then we're going to finish up the house and then we're going to get started with what it's going to take to progress through this pack. Um, and also, I'm going to go ahead and get the roof put on here. The roof is going to be very simple, uh, just made out of um, some more wooden materials and cobblestone materials. Um, and then we started, like I said, probably doing some more mining today and uh, figuring out easier ways of mining for sure. As you can see, pretty simplistic on the build. There's there's not too much sticking out and it's very plain Jane on the outside, especially the roof. Everything is very simplified and that's what you kind of want to do with your first build, really. Just kind of keep it simple, just make it a usable space, which is what I'm doing. Now, um, I kind of want to show you what I've done here to kind of add a little bit of detail to the outside. I've just went ahead and made the architect's uh, salt bench and this adds a lot of really cool blocks. I wish it would add a couple more, but beggars can't be choosy. I went ahead and added some railings. Railings are these things you see adding detail to the side here. Um, and then also added what looks kind of like trim, um, which is down here in the, uh, I believe it's under the uh, classical section. Um, and it said um, <laughs> Cronice bottom. I guess that's, uh, that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. I usually pronounce it, uh, or I usually call these things trim. It does look like trim. Um, but yeah, I kind of added it. So what, what you got to do, drop it in here, put it in here and go, all right, I want some of these pieces. And uh, it lets you place it multi in multiple directions. 
But for like something like this that's up here, I need to grab some uh, some blocks so I can at least build with. You can kind of see this is uh, just lets you add a little bit of detail to things. And of course, I have it all along here, adding some detail, uh, just trying to make it look less plain with the amount of blocks that I have. Because you got to keep in mind, all I have is wood and cobblestone. So I, I, I'm kind of limited on my options. And the reason I went with the wood, the, the cobblestone type for the roof is because I thought it looked a bit more like shingles. Now, I do know that it doesn't look so great on the corners, but on the top, it actually doesn't look too bad. It does kind of resemble shingles a bit. And it is kind of gray. The building is mostly gray. Um, and that's why we probably need to get some green added to this. And usually I do that by taking some shears and adding some leaves. And this makes a world of difference. You'd be surprised at how much this actually affects things. Um, so if you go ahead and add like oak leaves, which usually oak leaves are what I go with because they look so good. You just take some of these oak leaves and, I'll, leaves and I'll clean up some of this stuff later. Eventually, most of this land will be cleaned up as well. And I mean, just start placing it in uh, some strategic places. Like, I know I would probably have a few bushes here, you know, and you can extend it out. Like, you don't have to. I'm, I'm never going to walk over here. So I do want to have a few bushes anyways. And of course, if it varies up, that's fine too. Because these, you kind of want to use what's locally around. Like, you can see the the type of trees. You got your spruce and then you got these uh, pine trees that are all over the place. Um, so kind of utilize those those uh, materials here when working with this stuff and it will make your, your builds look way better. Especially on the front where it's just so plain. I'm not worried about the sides that I can't see right now. But like areas like this, which I, I'm actually going to have a crop here anyways. Um, it kind of just helps, you know, make this not look so ungreen, I guess you could say, or make it look so dead. Because it doesn't look that great by itself. Like, a bush can probably go right here. And look pretty good. On the roof, too, um, I sometimes recommend it on here. I'm not gonna add any kind of, you know, detail to the roof, because I just don't think it needs any. But things like this always tend to help. Just add a few bushes here and there. And there we go. So, added a little bit of greenery. It needs some vines. I think vines would also help make this look a little bit better. But overall, pretty good. And then uh, eventually whack the ground with some bone mill and you have some nice little foliage and flowers. And everything is looking good. Um, another thing, add a few paths. Because paths are great. I'm going to eventually have this stared all the way down. So this will be the outs, uh, outside area where it's leading to my mine. So this is actually the main area technically right here. So yeah, you can go ahead and do this too, and that just helps add some more detail. Very, very nice. All right, let's go ahead and get to work with uh, how we can improve our mining and make our mining experience a little bit better. Now, believe me, this is related, but you are going to need sugarcane, and in this pack, because of apotheosis, sugarcane can grow as long as you have, uh, as tall as you have it configured uh, in the config to, uh, to grow. So yeah, uh, it does grow quite tall. And so uh, it's kind of nice uh, in itself because you don't have to plant as much sugar cane uh, to get a large quantity of it. You can kind of just let it grow so you don't have to have a huge field of sugar cane. Uh, but it is <laughs> really, really fun to break when it's that tall. Also, I wanted to mention, so since we're in the water, um, this has a mod that lets you swim in it just like you can in 112 uh and or in 114 or 113 i think it was when it came out um yeah you can totally swim in water when you're underwater you hit control and it lets you swim and you swim a lot faster and you can go up up water a lot faster as well so kind of cool i don't actually know what mod it is that is uh that is doing that um but it, i you know i really really like that uh because movement in water in 112 is just not fun anymore especially after playing any of the newer Minecraft updates. It is just a feature that just feels missing. But with that, with you able to do it in 112, it feels really great. And I'm super surprised. So the reason I grabbed all of this sugar cane, I want to make some paper, right? And then I also need to find some flowers. Um, there are some flowers around that are blue. Um, I think we can, I don't know. I think we can also find some in another dimension. So we can probably go to a new dimension today. 
Um, I don't know what all is going to be required. So aroma um, is a dimension. We have a, a, a mining dimension here. I don't know what biosphere portal frame. I guess there's a biosphere dimension as well. That doesn't seem. Oh, wow. That it actually does exist. So we can go to a the biosphere. Oh, that's going to be kind of cool. That's something we'll totally do later, though. Um, but what I want to make is this. So we do need some flint and some iron and we need some stone. So I might as well take some of our cobblestone here and uh, convert it back with our chisel. Convert this back to cobblestone. I do need to get some of it cooking because we do need stone anyways, so might as well get that started. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of blue flowers in this dimension. So let's go ahead and get all the things needed for that. I do have some flint. There we go. And I think we just need a regular stone pickaxe as well for this. I'll throw some of that in here. Come over here to our table. And there we go. We can make a regular stone pickaxe because that's, that's one of the things that's required for this. Right here is just making a regular stone uh, pickaxe. All right, so it looks like that and a piece of... And we also need a stick. And we need some stone. So we'll have to wait for the stone to creep up on us, but as soon as we have that... Bam, we have four. And this portal is really easy to make. Uh, it doesn't make any noise or anything like that. Uh, so you can pretty much place this portal wherever you feel comfortable. I'm probably going to place it... I don't know. Up in up here somewhere. Why not? Why not place it in this little area, kind of hidden away, um, and it'll fill this uh, this spot here. Now that I have that tool made and everything's ready to go, let's go ahead and get this done. So this is all related to mining as well, but uh, I'm gonna need to make this. So what is it? What am I gonna need? Like 14 of these, I think. You don't want to use up the whole thing because you need this mining tool to actually ignite the portal. I say ignite, but kind of start the portal. So let me go ahead and get all of this done. And yeah, we can place the portal right here. I do want it in the ground. So that should work. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna place this portal in the ground. It is gonna be the same shape. So it's always three tall or four tall on this piece here. And then, bam, you have yourself a portal. And like I said, you got to right click this on the bottom here. And then to get into this dimension, you walk in and then hold shift. And it's going to teleport you to another dimension. Now, the good part about this dimension is one thing. You're going to be able to find villages here really easy. Uh, there's villages in this dimension. And also these blue flowers is what I'm going straight for because we need these. These are a part of Silent Gears, um, and they're just an easy source early on of getting some blue dye. Um, now, like I said, you are gonna be able to find, I'm glad we found some of the oil here, but um, yeah, you're gonna be able to find things like oil, you're gonna be able to find things um, all over the place, but especially the one thing you're gonna find is uh, villages, which are really, really easy. And I think it's Eternal Day. I'm pretty sure it's always Eternal Day in this uh, dimension, so. A good place to come and mine. Now, back over here, we have our blue die, so let's go ahead and craft that. And this is where we're gonna get into blueprints. So Silence has um, some blueprints, and one of those is a hammer. Now a hammer is gonna require a stick and just your blueprint paper. Let's go ahead and grab some sticks. And yeah, th getting this tool as early as you can is gonna be very, very helpful. Because you can just use stone. So to make the blueprint, it's just paper. And eight of those will get you the blueprint tool for the hammer. And what I'm going to make it out of at first is I'm going to use a iron rod. And then I'm going to use cobblestone for the piece. And uh, you place it like this and you, got, you get yourself a hammer. A hammerhead. And then you can just place this here with two of those uh, custom rods that you got. Um, and yeah, it is. it does say brittle one, but that's okay. Um, using this versus uh, everything else, so that this basically will increase your durability, uh, the rarity and enchantability, and uh, it helps with the damage, versus this, which just helps with your enchantability and uh, the ranged speed. So I, I recommend probably using this instead, the iron. Let's go ahead and make that. And uh, whenever you start mining with it, let's say I mine with it, you can see 
it breaks like this, but if you hold shift, you can actually break one block at a time as if it was a pickaxe. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's better. Just, I mean, you still want your normal pickaxe, which mine's broken. I'm going to be switching this to an iron pickaxe so I can mine things like diamond, but um, it's still still well worth your, your while. So, yeah, speaking of making an iron pickaxe, I mean, that's what I want to do. I just want to make a regular full iron pickaxe. So make an iron pickaxe head um, with the current iron that we have and use these iron rods that I have as well. And then I might as well also upgrade my machete here and uh, make it iron. Actually, I want to make um, an actual regular sword. Um, I did find that when, eventually when you get the right materials, this sword can be so powerful. Um, so let's go ahead and make the blueprints here as well. We get eight more of those, but I'm just going to make a regular sword just like that. And we're going to make this iron as well. Um, and this also gets a handle. So let's go ahead and make it iron. That's currently the best material that we have right now. And uh, yeah, we just apply that there and we get ourselves a nice iron sword that does 5.5 damage. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. And we get an advancement, a better sword. <laughs> nice. Um, so with all that in mind, let's go do some mining. So while I was mining just to tunnel down, because I want to get to a good mining level, um, yeah, my uh, my tool broke. But the, the good thing is, is you can actually place this in here and just uh, keep repairing it with just regular materials. Super handy. Uh, I really like this. Um, it's like a it's a substitute, I guess, for Tinger's Construct. Um, there is a more in-depth um, way you can tinker with your tools. If that's something you actually want to do, there is actually uh, templates here, which lets you customize individual pieces and things like that if you really want to. Um, I haven't gone full into this just yet, um, but there is, uh, yeah, a, a place here. And you also can make a book here that actually holds your blueprints and things like that. There's a table. There's a way to analyze your parts. Um, yeah, just all kinds of goodies here. But yeah, I'm, I'm mining down here. I'm at Y level 27 now. So I'm just kind of making my way. Um, the caves in the upper areas are going to be really nice because I'm able to just kind of go through and handpick things that I want. And oh, look down here. We might actually find diamond if we're lucky. Um, so I want to get through all of this. Look, there's another another cave area. Look at that gold right off the bat. I'm hoping that we can find diamond just right away. That'll be super helpful. Just to, if we find diamond and stuff like that, that would be really nice. I'm just going to keep going down and uh, till we uh, get through this cave. So as you can see, I'm slowly but surely running out of food. Um, something I can kind of do to help with that is by utilizing some of this stone here. We can make a stone pressure plate and put stone on top of it and I can get a juicer. Now what I'm going to use this juicer for is these beautiful cherry trees that are over here. I'm just going to simply harvest some of the cherries off of most of the trees. They seem to be fairly ripened at this point. There we go. So we ended up getting a bunch of cherries. And uh, if you split these up here, you can get yourself some cherry juice, which is going to be way better than your cherry. It's going to, for one thing, satisfy the, the um, saturation, which is definitely really good. It does look like this tree probably needs to wait a bit longer. Um, and yeah, once you also, like, I recommend just planting a bunch of these trees, as they do take a little bit of time to, pol to fully uh, finish. Um, but yeah, if you plant a bunch of them, you should be good. These trees are coming from forestry. Which, I have a slight feeling that's why there's so many butterflies nearby. Because they are really liking this uh, these trees. Because uh, there is a lot of butterflies all around. Um, so yeah, just taking these and splitting these up will get you a good amount of food. Um, for a little while, of course. And that's kind of what I've been using here. Um, I've, I've been eating cherries, but I did look into it and I was like, maybe they have cherry, you know, cherry juice, which would be nice. I don't think that'd be that great at tasting to drink on a daily basis, but uh, it's what our characters will be using for right now. Now, if we go down into our, <laughs> our cave, we have a lot of cool stuff down here. Um, now, unfortunately, I, I need to make this one taller because I still whack my head on this as we go down. But I am going to get that. I, I did do it right here. This this is perfectly fine. But that little area there, hmm, not not OK. But we didn't really have our hammer until that point. So. Having the hammer makes it so much easier to go down. But if we go all the way down here, look what I ended up finding. Ooh, diamond. 
uh, which I'm kind of excited about. I, it is right here by the lava. I'm at Y level 12, or 11 right now, but I'm at Y level 12 is where you'll see it. And uh, yeah, you kind of stay at Y level 12, you stay one level above where lava normally spawns. So it's a kind, of a, kind of a good place to hang out. Now this water, there's a big open cave here. Just all of this, and this water is separating everything, and we have basalt here. Kind of, kind of an interesting formation. But there's a whole lot over here. I don't even know what that is. It's kind of dark over here. Completely dark. Oh, it's it's uh apparently some more oil. Okay. I was like, why is it so dark over there? Well, now I know. So yeah, in these caves, these caves are so expansive. And uh, it's just, it's so fun to explore these caves. The one thing I am missing, though, is a shield. If I had a shield, I'd be way better off. And look what we found. Nice. I wonder what that, oh, that redstone's a beehive. But look at that. We found ourselves an underground, uh, uh, not fortress, a uh, mine, a mi abandoned mine shaft. There we go. Nice. So once we head over there, we can do some more exploring. Maybe find some uh, loot boxes. Boxes that have some loot in them. I will go ahead and take all the lapis. And the main thing I'm kind of farming here is iron ore and lapis. And uh, I also have my little mine shaft area going all the way down to bedrock because we're going to need to access bedrock today um, and get ourselves some flint and steel. So this right here is just temporary, but I do need to take this all the way down. The bedrock so i'll probably leave this little two space or three space here and then make it where it goes down again because like i said we do actually need to uh, make it down to bedrock and i'll show you why so inside if you hit l you can pull up your guide and you can see right here it, it talks about some dimensions in this pack such as the nether and end can only be accessed through stack dimensions mod now if you take a look at into the shadows it says create a portal to the beneath and it says hold the correct dimension key in your hand and right click it on bedrock at the bottom of the overworld dimension. This is important because we're only going to be able to access these particular ores once we get there. Now to make this shadow key requires a few things. We need an infinity rod, a block of diamond, and aquamarine. Aquamarine and diamond are pretty uh, self-explanatory to get, but an infinity rod is going to take a little bit more as we need dark steel and we also need grains of infinity. Um, so, to get Dark Steel, we have to get into Ender I.O. To get into Ender I.O., we need to go all the way down to Bedrock. And then uh, from Bedrock, we can place, uh, we can light Flint and Steel on the Bedrock. And uh, it's going to do something kind of interesting if you've never played around with the new version of Ender I.O. So, hopefully this doesn't uh, spill lava all over the place. That is the only concern with going down this far. We're almost there. We're at well level six. I do see lava above. Ah, I knew that was probably going to happen. Well, you break this. We might be able to get lucky and prevent that from spilling in. Yeah, this this is probably the hardest part is just getting down to bedrock without having lava spawn. Sometimes you can get real lucky and you don't have to deal with any of that. But not always. Like right here. All of this. It's got to be capped off. And now we have to wait for all the lava to despawn. So now that I'm down underground, I have this little area cleared out where we have access to bedrock. And believe me, we are going to put something here later on. But for right now, this bedrock is going to be very useful for our flint and steel. So I went ahead and made a bunch of flint and steel. And uh, we just get to have fun lighting all the flint and steel on the ground. Oh, this is so much fun. Um, especially the sound it makes is so satisfying. But you're going to hear the sounds here here shortly when this starts to uh, put itself out it's already started there you go yep and we just already broke one uh keep in mind these items i believe are fire resistance like you can't throw them in the fire they just won't they won't deplete by doing so yeah just light the whole ground on fire by the time you walk around You'll probably have some more back. You can automate this little system. It, to me, it's not going to be important to have it automated. But you can use like a... Uh, um, I believe it is a dispenser to use a flint and steel. 
And yeah, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get this lovely um, grains of infinity that are going to just pop out of the fire. I think it's like a 50% chance for it to drop out of the flames. But I'm going to use up all of my flint and steel for this. Every bit I have, I think, yeah, I have two more. So I'll probably do one more round of this, basically. And uh, I'm going to collect all of these so we have them for later. And this is going to help us get into Ender.io, I think, uh, in the next episode. So yeah. So now that we gathered all of that, I think uh, I think we've done a lot. I think we got quite a bit done today. Um, because we are gonna be needed. Like I showed you, the key is gonna be definitely important. And uh, I did go ahead and move some of our stuff, like our chests and stuff, into here. Um, but there's gonna be more work done to this building. I really want to extend this down. I think take this down. Also add to the roof. Um, I want this closed off and this to be like an attic thing up here. And to do that, I would just use some slabs of some sort, and the slabs would be on this level, basically covering everything, but leaving the beams. You would still see the beams. Uh, just everything else would be kind of covered up, which will look really good. Um, and then we'll also have some space up top for potential things, like maybe wiring or things like that. I don't know. There's a bunch of plans, a bunch of things I want to do, um, but, you know, you know how it goes. We only got about 20 to 30 minutes to get it done per episode, so bear with me. Guys, I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button already, I highly recommend doing so. And also ring that notification bell. It really help out a lot. Also, I do live stream over at twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. You can find me there as well. And don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.